Welcome to the Galactic Center Group at UCLA, where we study the supermassive black hole at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. In this short video, we will show you why our group uses the technology called adaptive optics to observe the stars in the center of our galaxy. If you're lucky enough to have a dark sky at night, you can see thousands of stars, and these stars twinkle. They certainly do not look like sharp points in the sky. Why is that? That is because when the starlight travels for many decades, or in most cases for thousands of years to reach the telescope on Earth, it has to go through the Earth's atmosphere right at the end of its journey. What does the atmosphere do? The light bends and bumps through the different layers of atmosphere, distorting the light before it enters the telescope. The hot and cold layers of air are always moving, the bending of the light keeps changing, which causes the starlight to twinkle. So even with the highest magnification on the largest telescope, unfortunately the images you will get are not of the best quality. The costliest way to solve this problem is to launch a large telescope into space. Because it gets above the atmosphere, the pictures it gives are much clearer and sharper. However, launching even a smaller automated telescope into space is prohibitively expensive. Is there an affordable way to solve this problem of starlight blurring from the ground? Fortunately, there is. The biggest laser show on Earth. Here you can see a beautiful video of the world's largest telescopes at the world's greatest observatory on top of Mauna Kea, a 14,000 feet dormant volcano on the island of Hawaii. It is beautiful to watch this show, but what do the lasers have to do with astronomical observations? These lasers are a key part of the breakthrough technology called the adaptive optics. This method is shown in this video created by Gemini Observatory. A beam of the laser light is sent up in the same direction of the sky area being observed by the telescope camera. The laser light reaches 60 miles high where the thin atmosphere reflects it back down to towards the ground. On its return trip, the laser light passes through the same air that the starlight has to travel through. So by the time the laser light returns to the telescope, it has gotten blurred and distorted, the same as the light from distant stars. Then this bright but distorted laser light is fed into the adaptive optic system. Its job is to fix the distortions. See how this looks without the adaptive optics correction turned on. You can see how blurry the image is. Next, we switch on the adaptive optics. The heart of it is a rapidly deformable mirror. This rubber mirror adjusts its shape dozens of times every second to exactly cancel out the blurriness of the incoming light. The correction is determined by rapid computer processing to make the blurred laser beam into a sharp point of light. Applying that same correction to the incoming light from stars also dramatically sharpens the observed images of all the stars in the picture. We show here the difference between the image of the galactic center without and with the adaptive optics turned on. The difference is crystal clear. Without the adaptive optics on, all you see is diffuse light filling up the entire boxed region. The blurs from all stars are hopelessly overlapped. But once the adaptive optics is on, we can suddenly see individual stars clearly, including fainter ones that we previously had no idea were even there. What's so special about adaptive optics? It takes the twinkle out of the stars. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to check out other videos from the UCLA Galactic Center Group.